This is Caps PA announcer Wes Johnson, and you're listening to Bull the Pod. Hello, everybody, and welcome to a brand new edition of What the Puck. It is a Washington Capitals podcast, which means it's a podcast about your 2018 Stanley Cup champions. Thank you all for listening to us on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn, Player.fm, Overcast, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Facebook, and YouTube. And uh, with Coach Dan fixing it, it you know, it, that's all true. We are available in all those places, thankfully. We actually showed up on Facebook for the first time last week. I'm so sorry. Ever. Yeah, it, honestly, yeah, that's the first time we've ever been on Facebook where it wasn't a video I uploaded. They just were able to get into our RSS feed and just take it that way, and I'm uh, so happy that worked. So mm-hmm. thanks a lot, Coach Dan, for that. Here we Welcome, are. Welcome, everybody. It is December. Coach Dan is happy. He, he, he's a computer whiz kid. But we got the caps to talk about. That's right. Well, computer whiz, mid middle aged man. Okay, calm down. Not middle aged, you jerk. <laughs> no, I got stuff to do. I ain't got you, time for you, that. You got stuff to do. All right, fine. Well, hey, you know who's got stuff to do? The caps, because they're winning things. That's what they're doing. Segway right there. The caps uh, coming off a a rough end to November, but. Uh, or the last game, I should say, that they played up against the Anaheim Ducks had a really good showing, and they were able to sneak away with a win and actually win in an overtime game. Something different what? we haven't seen. First one of the year. <laughs> Feels like the first one ever. <laughs> they were like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. After the third period, we can still keep playing? After the second period, we can still keep playing. That's different. Yeah, well, that's another whole other thing. <laughs> well, they seem to have overcome a bit of that recently. But, yes, they were able to finally come out. They beat Anaheim. It only took, what, a quarter of the way into the season for them to realize, a little, little more than that for them to realize, oh, we can win a game in overtime. That's crazy. And a little so, embarrassing yeah. that they didn't do that until the – but, you know, it is what it is. They certainly could be in a, a – not that they're in a bad spot. I mean, they're top of the league in points as of this recording. But they – Top of the league. Top of the league. Where are the standings going? I just had them open. They – no, I didn't. I, I mean, I if went. you listen to our show, you'd think that they were, like, you know, getting the number one draft pick or something. No, kind of. I know. And, like, it's weird because the other – the other day, I was just like, I just, I don't know. I don't know about Laviolette. Like, I don't know if it's really working all that well. Like, some games are better than others, but they can't win it over time. The power of play is garbage. And then I was like, wait a minute. But they have been winning some games. They they currently have 38 points. So, they're top of the league right now. I mean, they've played two less games. Sorry. They played two more games than Florida, who's only one point behind them. Uh, so, you know, Florida could be on top of the league with another win. Still have a game in hand. But... The Caps are doing really well. And then when you look at Laviolette, they were talking about Caps this morning that after the Anaheim game, Laviolette has coached 82 games with the Capitals. Right. So he's had a full season at this point, right? Last year was a shortened season. So the statistics also are kind of weird because, like, you have changes in players in the offseason and whatever else. And so take this with a grain of salt. But through his first 82 games, a what should be the equivalent of a regular season, the Caps have gone 52, 19, and 11. That's that's not bad. That's not bad. Although, of those 11 ties, six of them are from this season. Sorry, not ties. Overtime losses. Six of them are from this season. So, that's something that's got going wrong so far this year that should be better. Right. But it's 115 points, which is pretty good. He's got the most wins and the most points amongst any coach in team history through their first 82 games. Beating All out uh, uh, Bruce Boudreaux. That is correct. He beat out club legend Bruce Boudreaux, who we'll talk about a little later. That's right. Yeah, we will. Uh, Good for Gabby. We'll talk about him in a little bit. But, yeah, that's what – I mean, it's hard for us to sit here and complain about this team, complain about the coach when – No, it's not. When he's winning. Like, (laughs) yes, yeah, the playoffs really sucked last year. But, like, LaViolette came in during a pandemic – 
obviously wasn't the best way to start your coaching career with the Capitals. <laughs> no. But, I mean, he's he's winning. Ovi's doing really well as Ovi does things. Uh, it's not even that. Sorry and to cut you off the, with and, 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 well, but And the defense is what I want to bring up. Laviolette's always uh-huh. been really good with the defense. The defense has majorly improved, even though if you look at that game, what was, who was it against? Uh uh last week I'll, I'll remember in a second but the just the defense we we kind of like gave the defense props last the wednesday Chicago game yeah and then they came out and crapped the bed like you like to say uh the defensive wise so yeah that was they that made, was they made a mess in the sheets yeah Wait, but anyway yeah no, go no. go on you want to talk about ov doing things but like laviolette he came in he has improved this team and he's doing it this he's doing it this year without a lot of his starters that's true i mean that's a very good point he's doing this Without Oshi, for the most part, or for a significant worse, Backstrom hasn't seen the ice yet. He's got now Dowd, Hathaway, and Van Riemsdyk are all out with uh, in the COVID protocols. We don't, I don't know, do they have the virus, or they're just potentially around someone who had the virus? I mean, with the amount of time that they've been out, I assume that they have. Well, no, the because virus. you have to stay out if you are a close contact with someone who tested positive. You have to stay out a certain amount of time before you can be tested to officially know if you have the virus or not. So, like, they may not have it, but still may miss a few games as a result, just depending on the schedule lays out. Yeah, it this is it's it's been kind of nuts because we know Lars Eller had it. He he came back. He said the quarantine, the ten day quarantine, was actually worse than the actual virus for him. But he was stuck in Anaheim. He was stuck in that hotel room in Anaheim. Oh no, he was stuck in warm weather. And well, he couldn't go outside. He was dark. stuck in his hotel room. Open the window. <laughs> like it's supposed to freaking snow here which and not even like good snow it's supposed to be like slushy crap that yeah. we're gonna get tomorrow and right would... in the fun snow and he's like i was stuck in anaheim screw you eller <laughs> well eller uh, was the only one to test Whiny positive baby. at that point uh when they were in Thank california okay. yeah uh he, he had the t- he, had, he said he had some symptoms but he started to do the 10-day quarantine stuck in anaheim uh but this apparently happened after the Carolina game. Carolina had an outbreak uh, right around the same time, so they're thinking maybe Eller had it. And now these guys, I guess it's been two weeks. Wait, they're but... thinking Eller gave it to Carolina? No, he got it after the Carolina game. So, oh, okay, I misunderstood. Yeah, playing against Carolina, they think Eller may have picked it up then. They're doing all kinds of contact tracing, you know, with with the way the NHL is doing their protocol thing. But he potentially... Let me tell you, as someone who's had to do that before, contact tracing, it is not fun. Yeah. It is a pain to figure out. I have not had to go through that, thankfully. You know, knock on wood, I'll, I won't have to. Uh, but, yeah, the contact tracing, I have to imagine, like, asking s- someone where they've been and who they've been around and all that kind of stuff is is rough. No bueno. <laughs> yeah. No, it is, it is no bueno. But you were talking about uh, uh, Ovechkin a few moments ago in terms of his play. And we talked about how Laviolette's been doing this without these star players. No Backstrom, no Oshie, no Mantha, no Eller for a little bit. Uh, who else has been out? You know, every everyone's been out at some point. It, it seems like at this point, except for Wilson and Ovechkin. But when you talk about Ovechkin, he's definitely stepping up. So are a lot of the other guys, but he's definitely stepping up in his play. And yeah, you know, everybody keeps talking about how he's going for Gretzky's record. He's going for the you know, most goals ever scored in the NHL. He's got more assists right now than goals. Oh, he's such a selfish team. player, he's, though. He's got. He's a completely selfish, selfish player. Really, twenty-one assists to twenty goals. He's got forty-one points. The closest player to him in points right now is Kuznetsov, who has twenty-eight points. He's got eight goals and twenty assists. Ovechkin has more assists than Kuznetsov, and he's got more goals than everybody. He's got way more points. I mean, he's he's almost no. He'd have to get a lot more points in a short amount of time to be a like two point per game player but he's definitely a point per game player as is kuznetsov right now wilson's almost a point per game player carlson is almost as well i mean you've got these kind of guys are stepping up when your other players are out but then you're getting production from garnett hathaway he's got seven goals how did garnett hathaway get seven goals all of a sudden well you got he's putting up points eller's doing okay you'd like to see him do a little bit better he's only got eight points in 20 games I'm sorry, 10 points in 20 games, 8 assists. Orlov stepping up offensively. I mean, the other people are, are you know, you got McMichael's got 8 and 24. He's got 3 goals, but he's starting to play. He's getting more comfortable as he goes forward. Um, Sprong's been struggling a little bit. You, but you've got Protus has got 2. Haglin finally scored. Leeson has had 2. You know, you're getting production from throughout your lineup with 
players that are stepping in that weren't expected to be here. And that's what you need when you have players that are going out. And that's what the Caps are getting right now, and that's why they're on top of the league. Yeah, it's been – like we talked about this, I think, last week, week before, about these Hershey Bear guys coming up. And, I, I mean, I, I got to go to the game against Anaheim, and some of these players I was – you know, next to my girlfriend going, I don't know who that is. I don't know who that is. I don't know who that is. <laughs> it was it was very, uh, very funny to kind of be like, I don't know who half these guys are, but uh, I'll say this, seeing these guys in person, I had no idea a lot of these Hershey Bears were so tall. All these guys, you know, like we talk about it. Brian McClellan likes the big, bulky guys, the the big, like the, the goon-esque type players. Definitely more skillful than a goon, but they look like goon. He likes those big guys, those big bodies. These these Hershey Bears, these are all massive dudes, and they can move, and they can skate, and they can fly down the ice, but they're also these big body athletes, which I was kind of surprised to see because you say Hershey Bears, you kind of think Henrik Slapierre, like a young guy who's like, you're like, all right, in a year or two, he, he can put on some weight, and he might, you know, be a threat in the NHL. These guys are, are massive hockey players right now. It's crazy. I mean, yeah, these are, I mean, they're big guys. And it does kind of question some of the planning for the Capitals considering the struggles. I mean, they came out with a win, but the struggles they had against Anaheim being that they are a young, fast team. And the Caps are bigger and, and a bit slower. And are they going in the wrong direction in terms of their style of play compared to the rest of the NHL? Now, big and uh, not slow, but big and strong and quality checking is what has you, you know, you get you wins in the playoffs. That can always change, but you know there is some concern about having a bunch of big slow guys because you just get beat up and down the ice by younger, faster teams. It's it's very true, and we we saw that firsthand against the Bruins in uh, round one of the Stanley Cup playoffs last year. These guys were coming out, they were swinging, they were they they were playing big body uh, uh, hockey, and after that first game, they were like, "Geez, that was rough. That was I'm tired." So uh, they they made a quick exit outside of the playoffs, but. This team, um, it, we're we're what a quarter of the way through the season right now. We're at about like twenty games or so, maybe a little underneath a quarter. Uh, these guys are, are are coming away with points, which is good. Uh, are the, some of these like garbage points because they just keep making it to uh, overtime? Yeah, I think so. But it's good that these guys have this younger talent that is saving their butts right now as we wait for these star players to, to come back, TJ Oshie is back on the ice. Uh, be, being able to see him against Anaheim was really a treat. When Carl Hagelin got his first goal of the year, TJ Oshie was out there on the ice. And uh, luckily my girlfriend got me these tickets. They were lower bowl. We were eight rows off the ice. Oshie's face lit up when, when uh, Hagelin got that goal. And I, he, you know, we always used to say that OV seems happier when his other uh, teammates score besides him. And he's just so excited. That's the way Oshie looked. Oshie looked like he was so incredibly happy, happy for Hagelin and that he uh, was just so happy that his teammate was able to get that goal and get that monkey off his back of not scoring yet into the season. So we have a, we have a team full of, uh, of, Great players, good leaders, all of that stuff is is really important in the in the stretch of this long season, and we're seeing that right now because this team has not been perfect. There's a lot of people up and down and out for injuries or COVID right now. So, getting these points and and racking up these these wins, you want this team to do that now, because uh, I mean tomorrow, who knows? We we already know the Capitals have canceled their practice for Wednesday out of a precaution for this COVID outbreak that's kind of happening because we saw what happened in Hershey. They had to postpone a bunch of games. Same thing happened with the New York Islanders because of COVID. They, the Capitals definitely don't want to see this trend continue uh, with the outbreak they're having, especially since they right now have three players out, unfortunately. So we'll see what, as the week progresses, what happens. But I think the Capitals right now on the ice and off the ice, they're playing a very smart brand of hockey. I, I don't think there's really a lot that we can say in terms of how they're doing because it's working. Like we said, they're on top of the league. There are things to be concerned about. The The goaltending is still a little bit of a question mark, although Sim Sonoff is playing exceptionally well, especially as of late. Yeah. And his record speaks for itself right now. He's 11-1-1. One, one. You know, his GAA is 2.42. He's got a save percentage of 9-1-6. And you wanted He's ahead to send of him to Hershey. Right 
Well, I think he'd be playing even better if I did. <laughs> so, no, he's, you know, he's playing well. I think that's what you need right now. You know, with the power play still struggling and with players still coming out, you need everybody else to step up. You And, and that's what you're getting throughout the lineup. And, you know, it, it, think about where this team could be, how many more points they could have if, one, they could win in freaking overtime. But then also if their power play was clicking. I mean, let me check, do a real quick check in terms of the power play stats by team, but I don't imagine they're much better than they were before in terms of the caps. Like themselves. It's, you know, it's it's a little too stale. It's kind of boring. Um, where is power play percentage? That can't be right. Oh, no, that's not right. Oh, there it is. Okay. I was like, that's like 60%. No one is scoring at a 60% rate. Like, at that point, when someone gets a power play, you're like, just go ahead. Right. Like, it's their goal. Uh, where are you guys? They are 20th in the league in power play right now. Yeah, that, that's 2-0. That's a problem. To, something to improve there, because that's that's way, way too PK, much. PK, they're 12th. I mean, that needs improvement, but the power play definitely needs improvement, and they could be flying by that point. And then think about once they get all their guys back, like Mantha, Backstrom starts playing, Oshie gets more comfortable, you know, then you have an opportunity to really get things going. And maybe, you know, you make a trade and bring in a, a, a second line winger to play with Backstrom and Mantha, you know, then you really are getting things going with Oshie playing on that third line. So, you know, this room, this team still has room to grow, but what they're doing right now is working. Now, let you know, me add- fix the things that are not working. Keep up playing well. The standings are a little misleading because they played three more games in the Rangers. They played three more games in Carolina. They're only two point. Uh, sorry, they're three points up on the Rangers, but they played three more games. They are five points up on Carolina, but they played three more games. So the standings are a little misleading at this point. You know, like I said before, they've played two more games in Florida, but they're only one point up on them. They've played the same amount of games as Toronto. They're two points up on them. So it's not quite, you know, if everybody's playing the same amount of games, depending on how these, the the ones that are different end up, you know, they may not be on top of the league. They probably, they could be as far back as third in the division. So they need to fix the things that are not working right now. So they have an opportunity to continue to be on top of the, the division and the league. Now we know that the Capitals love overtime and they finally were able to win one. It's their uh, favorite thing ever. It's true. We went, it was sudden death. It was a sudden death shootout. I mean, you couldn't ask for a more dramatic game uh, against Anaheim, but the caps started the, uh, the second period, nine seconds in the ducks were able to, to get a goal. We were saying last week, how much we were impressed with the defense and what they were doing. But with these games continually going to overtime and giving up these goals like nine seconds into the second period, is there an issue on defense that we're not talking about? Because why do these games, I mean, six games into a season, why are are these games going into overtime at all? Because we do have goal scorers on every single line right now. I mean, what did we say last week? It was seven rookies, six rookies that had scored a goal this year. Yeah. Ovechkin's having one of the best seasons uh, of his career. Yevgeny Kuznetsov is doing really well. Tom Wilson just got his 100th goal. I mean, all four lines are scoring, but why do you think it is this team just can't finish it in regulation? Is it a, is it a defense issue? Is it an offense issue? Is it a goalie issue? Is it a combination of all of that? What do you think? I think they just don't want to go home. <laughs> they don't want to quarantine back in the hotel room. No, they want to, they want to stay at the rink, hang out with the but their buddies, keep playing a little bit longer. That's what I mean. I I feel like that would be what I would want to do in that regard. So no, I I that was a joke. I don't know. It's kind of tough to say because I think part of the issue is that they just have not. A, I don't even know if it's a lack of focus or is it a lack of. I think of the right word here energy almost to an extent when they come out to go into the next uh, uh, period. So is that, is that an age? So they come thing? into the second or they... come into the third? No, because they don't, it, it, they're not like, they're not all over 35. 
you know, they do have some, they, they, like we've said, we've had a lot of young players that have come up and scored because, you know, they've had guys that are out. So it's not just, it can't just be an age thing, right? Mm-hmm. I, I think it's a lack of focus. I think to, it, it's a lack of coaching to an extent. And I think it's a lack of, I, it goes back to, it's a lack of overall energy to start a period. I don't know what they need to do to get themselves fired up and ready to go back out because it seems to be working for other teams that can come out and can produce and the capitals can't either produce or stop another team from producing. And I think it's something the coaching staff really has to look at in terms of figuring out what can, what can they do to stop that from being an issue? And it's a matter of, I think getting them ready in the locker room, whether it's getting them fired up. I mean, maybe they got to go in and start calling. What is he? And Miracle, what did he call the dude when he got, like, a minor injury and didn't think he could play? I don't remember. I don't want to – no, it's like a candy ASS, you know? And, the, you know, I don't know if that's – First what, time you don't want to curse? I know, right? Well, I'm tr- – my son was, like, walking by, so I wasn't trying to, like, just yell it out. But, <laughs> I, you know, I don't know if, it, if that's what it is. Like, a lot of you like, needs to just pick a player every period and be like, Michael, you are terrible. <laughs> Or, you know, start dropping F-bombs at him like Boudreau and get him fired up. Although I don't think Boudreau actually dropping F-bombs at people so much as he was just dropping them as part of his vernacular. <laughs> just standing up. All right. Well, uh, you know, I got to um, I got to go to the game like I brought up multiple times already uh, on Monday <laughs> uh, up against the Anaheim Ducks. I want to talk a little bit about the experience going to the game because I honestly I don't think I have been to a game since before they won the Stanley Cup, if I'm thinking, remembering correctly. I, I It's been a very long time since I've got to go to a game. Uh, but this was interesting because this was their holiday party game, so everyone got a free T-shirt. So we walk in and... Is that uh, what you're wearing right now? That's, that's what I'm wearing oh, right now. Oh, that's right. You told me last week. Okay, is mine on the way? I mean, you know, you gotta you gotta check Santa's list, to make sure uh, you're you're on the right one. Oh, I guess I'm definitely not getting that. <laughs> uh, I'm getting a lump of coal this year. Well, I was expecting you know, what they normally do: you get your ticket scanned, and then you get your giveaway at the door, right? And also, uh, my girlfriend and I got there four ninety five, not crowded. Like, it only took me forty five minutes. Wait, which way did you go? Uh, from 95, 95 South. Outer loop to... or inner loop? I don't know. I come, I go from 90, <laughs> 95 to Silver Spring. You have Spring. the same thing out there in Baltimore, 695? Uh, Were you going through Virginia or did you go around like PG? No, why would I go through Virginia? I'm in the north. No, because you would come and then go across. Doesn't, no, never mind. No, because you would take, I guess you're coming down 95, not 270. God, that makes more sense. Okay. Hey, look, calm down, Baltimore. Yeah, whatever, Olney. It's not even a word. It's a sound. <laughs> I don't live in Aldi anymore. <laughs> we Oops, moved like well, three years ago. Uh, I'm glad I haven't mailed your gift yet. Uh, <laughs> um, You've have you sent stuff to me? Now? Yeah, I have. I got your kid a stick. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He, yeah, we had to take that away from him a couple days ago. <laughs> oh great, lovely. He he got it back. He got it back. All right. Well, yeah. So I, I was on 495 from from 95. I, I park at Silver Spring uh, because there's a lot by the old Discovery Building that you can get to, and it's free parking after five. Which actually they did say that they're changing in January. So I saw that on the door. So it's probably the last time I get to f- park freely at Silver Spring. Uh, but we took the the metro in, and we were looking for a place to eat. Most of the places around the stadium are gone or shuttered, like. Yeah, there's still like the McDonald's or the Duncan attached to the arena, but any place that I would normally go with our buddy Phil before a game is gone. I was a little excited because they have a Nando's. Ooh, a Nando's. Yeah, they have a Nando's, That's but fun. my girlfriend was not feeling the Nando's. We tried to go to Clyde's. They had an hour wait. We're like, all right, well, the door's open in 20 minutes. Why would we do that? There was a there was a Christmas market across the street. We're like, let's go check that out. It was closed. So we're like, all right, well, I guess we're just standing in line and waiting for the doors to open. And we were the first people at the front door to get into the place. So I'm like, all right, this is 
we're only like 20 minutes away from doors opening and it's a shortened time to get into the building anyway puck drops at seven you can't get in till uh till six then you you go in you know they 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 search your stuff they they it's all contactless so you you get your ticket scanned by a machine now and then there's nobody handing out the free t-shirts so I'm like, where's our T-shirt? Like, is this going to be like an Oriole thing where you got to, like, check back in a week or so to pick one up later <laughs> on, which I've had happen before at uh, Camden Yards? But, no, they put them on the back of every single seat in the arena. Wow. Oh. So I guess so people don't touch other stuff or try to grab stuff or whatever, they, they did that. But then you could just go and swipe everybody's. Well, that's the thing. This game was nowhere near a sellout. At all. We were eight rows off the ice, and there were two Ducks fans next to us, and then the rest of the row was completely empty the entire game. There was one guy in a like a lumberjack button-down shirt who I don't know why he was at a Caps game, but he was drinking his Miller Lite and just got done cutting down a tree. So then he went to the Caps game after, and he sits down like halfway through the second, a couple seats away from us, sits down in the seat, takes a sip of beer, and then picks up a shirt and leaves. I'm like, dude, you ain't that slick. Like, you want the shirt, just take the shirt. Ten minutes later, he comes down, sits in a different seat, takes another shirt. So uh, uh, my girlfriend's just kind of like, all right, well, I guess it's uh, free T-shirt time. We're halfway through the second. And from the beginning of the game where most of the seats were red from those T-shirts, all the empty seats, they all turned blue by about, you know, halfway through the second, because I guess everyone was like, all right, this person's not showing up, free t-shirt for me, and it was just like a free-for-all at that point. They're all going on eBay. <laughs> exactly, is what they're doing. Well, I think most people are like, hey, you know, it's a Christmas gift. I have to buy this kid a, a gift now. There you go. That's thinking with your brain. Right. I was thinking, though, because this was the holiday party, I thought there'd be like, they said there would be Santa Slapshot, I was thinking Red Rockers, but apparently, like, the Red Rockers pre-covid were they're not doing that anymore like that's not a thing so there was nobody walking around taking pictures or like cheering or anything like that santa slapshot i thought would be like him on a throne somewhere and then you get like a photo op opportunity that wasn't happening so like all like that's not gonna work during covid man all the bells and whistles of going to a caps game i think because of covid all of that's gone so literally you're there to buy food buy merch, and then you sit down in your seat, and that's it. So, I understand That's kind of what I do in a game anyway, so... No, I'm, doesn't I'm, sound like it's all that different for me. I will watch a game on TV. I want to go to a game for all the bells and whistles. I want all the extra stuff. I want the, like, those stress ball pucks. I just want the bell when they score. I Yeah, that's true. I do want freebies. I, I always love going to games where I'm like, what's the freebie this one? Right. I want the free stuff. That's what I'm for. And yes, the t-shirt's very nice. Got to thank my girlfriend again for getting me this as the Christmas gift. I've never sat that close for a game before. That was amazing. Oh, it's um, fun. Yeah. I've I've sat close twice. One Once was in a suite, and then once was a couple rows under the suites. But I've never sat eight rows off the ice. Uh, during a regular season game. I have snuck down there during preseason games, but never during the regular season. So that was really awesome. It was a great grift. Thank you so much to my lady for that one. Um, <laughs> but uh, it was it was a fun game, but you can definitely tell that COVID has taken a toll on the in-game experience. But honestly, there, I mean, I can't fault any sporting event for that right now we're all we all have to be safe and luckily we all can come together and watch a game i kept my mask on the entire time a lot of people did not but it's uh you know it is what it is if you're for it or against it whatever that's just the times we're living in right now so i look forward to a day where we can get pictures with Slapshot again and we can have people walking around cheering and uh getting people to cheer in the concourse that kind of thing Food was weird, though. Like, it was like you order it on a screen and then pick it up at a window. The popcorn bags were all really tiny, but is what it is. It was a great game, though. There was uh, I got to see a fight. It was the first major pen or uh, penalty the Caps have taken all year. So yeah. that's actually yeah, I, that's, I didn't expect that. That's what? What are we? Twenty six games in. And uh, it's the first fighting major that Tom Wilson has gotten this year. Look at that willy baby growing up uh, right in front of our eyes. Well, they've been talking about one thing they talked about. This is on Caps this morning. They were talking about how they've been playing with the lead a lot. Right. 
and I think they may have talked this before, but someone else had mentioned that it makes a lot of sense that they also have been playing without a lot of veteran guys. Right. So spending five minutes a game of your say 22 minutes of ice time that you normally get in the penalty box for fighting just it doesn't make a lot of sense when you think about it. So I, it, it, you know, once I thought about that, I was like, you know what? It does make a lot more sense that they haven't had as many fighting majors because just it doesn't benefit the team at all. I, I would think though that some uh, unless it's Brad Marchand. <laughs> I would think some up and comers though would kind of want to show that they're willing to do anything for Jersey and to have them play. But I agree with you. You you want to impress with what you can do on the ice, not by sitting in the penalty box. But you know, I don't think any of these players. If somebody says, "Hey, let's drop the mitts," I don't think that any of them are going to go. No, nah, I'm good. I think they still would do it. But I do agree with you. You want to show what you can do on the ice. You want to be have that chance to score goals. You don't just want to be able to throw haymakers. And Tom Wilson yes. showed that because he got his 100th goal of his career last night. That's true. Congratulations to him. Uh, b- probably a lot more than some people expected. <laughs> I know. Horrific acts of violence from that Tom Wilson. You, you'd wonder. <laughs> you would wonder how many more goals he'd have if he'd stop getting suspended. Right. Right. <laughs> so. Top line Tom. At the moment, he's playing like it. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Anything else we should cover in Caps World? We got a little bit of a break coming up here. The Caps don't play again until Friday up against those pesky Penguins. Yeah, it's kind of weird that they have this long break. But to be honest, with the injuries and the guys in the COVID protocol, it's not necessarily the worst thing right now. That's going to be huge. Think about that, though. You got the Penguins coming up on Friday. Uh, this is a big opportunity for a lot of these Hershey Bears. I think everybody knows that rivalry between the Caps and the Penguins. Uh, and a lot of these younger players kind of grew up watching that Ovechkin-Crosby rivalry as well as they were becoming hockey players. So that's got to be a, a big game for a lot of these young guys. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's sort of a, it can be a statement game for some of them in terms of where they see themselves and their importance uh, to this team and how much they want to stay up here by producing in a, a game that's as enti- uh, highly anticipated and as important as a game against Pittsburgh. Yeah. Anything else we should cover in Caps World? Um, No, I think I think we've pretty much covered it. All right. Well, hey, that's it for what's going on in Caps World. Now let's go down on the farm. All right, everybody, here we go. We're going down on the farm. We are talking Hershey Bears and South Carolina Stingrays. Coach Dan, what's going on down on the farm? Let's start, as we usually do, in Hershey, where the Bears went 0-0 zero and zero as all of their games got rescheduled. Yikes. <laughs> yeah. Hershey's home game that was originally scheduled for November 28th will now be played on Wednesday, January 5th against the Lehigh Valley at the Giant Center. The game will be at 7 o'clock. And then their road game that was supposed to be at Lehigh Valley that was originally supposed to be played back on December 4th. That's also been rescheduled. It will now take place on Sunday, February 13th, just after 2 o'clock at the PPL Center. And then Hershey's home game that was originally scheduled for December 5th will now be played on Tuesday, February 22nd versus Wilkes-Barre Scranton at 7 o'clock at the Giant Center. They're going to restart their season on Saturday in Wilkes-Barre Scranton before hosting Laval on Sunday at the Giant Center. They'll then head back to Wilkes-Barre Scranton on Tuesday. So, nice little drive back and forth for some reason. Down in South Carolina, the Stingrays went 2-1 and one with both of their wins being over Greenville. Now, they're currently tied for fourth in the South Division with 20 points. Three back of first place Orlando. They'll be back at it with an extended trip to Idaho with three games on Wednesday, Friday, and then Saturday. That's what's going on down on the farm. The hotbed for hockey, Idaho. Yeah. Hockey, it's big. It's big there. Big. Okay. All right. Go Idaho. All right. Well, hey, go Bears. Go Stingrays. Get well soon, Bears. Hopefully we can play some hockey soon for the Hershey Bears. COVID sucks, guys. 
All right, that's it for what's going on down on the farm. Now let's go around the NHL and beyond. Everybody, here we go. We're going around the NHL and beyond. Plenty of stuff going on in the hockey world. Coach Dan, catch us up. What is going on around the NHL and beyond? Well, let's start in the great city of Vancouver, where their owner clearly had had enough as he <laughs> fired general manager Jim Benning and head coach Travis Green. Stan Smile, which the way his name pronounced makes him kind of sound like he'd be a Spider-Man villain. He <laughs> takes over as the interim general manager while Caps legend Bruce Boudreau takes over as head coach. I thought he was done after Minnesota. Didn't he come out at some point and say when his time in Minnesota was over that he was done coaching in the NHL? I'm and he sure. didn't want to like, you know, move his family around and stuff. Well, I, I mean, I thought he said that and then he brought up the Hershey Cubs, invested in the Hershey team. And now he's going well, to the Well, this is more money for him to <laughs> to push energy. I mean, I saw some clips from his press conference in Vancouver. He talked about how he always wanted to coach in Canada and how he talked to a bunch of people before accepting the, op the, the job and that they had some really good pieces there he's excited to work with. Worked out so, pretty well. They beat up on L.A. and won 4 nothing. So this is what happened. Bruce Boudreaux was like, you know what? I'm done. I'm done. I'm not coaching anymore. Bring, bring, bring. Yeah, so he's got an old-timey phone. Picked it up, and he was like, hello? No, no, I'm done coaching. How much? You have a haagen I'm there. Click. That's how it went. And, and a Tim Hortons. Oh, yeah. Got to have the Tim Hortons, eh? <laughs> Now, Vancouver also uh, dismissed uh, assistant GM John Weisbrod and assistant coach Nolan Baumgartner. Uh, they let those guys go. Boudreaux named one-time capital Scott Walker as an assistant coach. Now, the Canucks weren't the only ones looking to make a change in Philly as they fired their head coach, Elaine Vigneault, and assistant coach uh, Michel Therrien. Mike Yo, who was the assistant coach, will take over. He formerly was the head coach in uh, with Minnesota. Now, Buffalo. let me ask you before you go on. All right, so think about the Rock the Red era of the Capitals. Mm -hmm. Who do you think that currently is not still playing would be a good cog for a Bruce Boudreaux-led hockey team to be a coach for? Like, who could be a good goalie coach, defensive coach, offensive coach that was from the Rock the Red era as a player who could now be a coach for under Bruce Boudreaux? If they need a fighting coach, Alexander Seven. No, no, it's terrible. <laughs> It'd be great with the bongos. He'd be fantastic. Yeah, it's a bongo man. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but wait, who is not currently playing anymore? Not playing right now. Like, so you're looking at like a, uh, uh, oh, you know what? Canoebel. Canoe. That's the name I was hoping you were going to say. Canoebel or Arnott. I feel like would be Ooh, are not. I didn't think of him. That's a yeah, good he wasn't, one. Not a long time capital, but Jason are not Mike Canoble, I think would be good ones. Uh, Chris Clark potentially. Chris Clark. And he, I mean, I, mean okay. I, I don't know. Cause I don't really know how they, if they ever wanted to, but uh, Clark could be good. I'm, I'd be curious about like, yeah, I don't know what he's doing now. He's, he's got his personal he like stuff going on. Fitness thing or something. And then, um, hmm. what about uh, what about Alsner? Do you think he could be a good coach? I think he might be more of the radio TV kind of guy. And he does have his new podcast coming out. If you'd like to come on yeah. our show and talk, he's more than welcome. I think that'd be that'd be fun. That would be interesting. I don't know. I'm going Knubel and Arnott as my top two choices. Yeah, Knubel was the first name when I thought about that. That really jumped out to me. Be like, yeah, I bet you. I mean, he he played under Bruce. They they know each other really well. Uh, he was a smart player. He would, I think, he could fit right in as a coach, especially working with Bruce Boudreau. I think so. I, I like yeah. that. I'm going with Canoodle. Uh In other news, Buffalo acquired goalie Malcolm Subban from Chicago for future considerations. And then it wouldn't be the end of the show without a couple of guys getting suspended or fined. Yeah. As Winnipeg's Neil Pionk was suspended. I hope that's how you pronounce his last name because it sounds fun to say. He was suspended for two games for kneeing Toronto's Rasmus Sandin. And apparently that game got a little testy as Toronto's Wayne Simmons was fine twenty two fifty for cross checking Winnipeg's Jansen or Jansen Harkins. So I don't know. Toronto Winnipeg apparently not getting along right now. But that's the news for the past week in the NHL and beyond. Lots of stuff going on, but coach, 
Coach, is that the show for this week? I think that's it. Let's wrap it up. Gonna wrap it up. Cap's got a couple doing the, days doing off. The finger twist thing. Yeah, that's what we're doing. Cap's got a couple days off. We got some hockey to prepare for on Friday. So uh, if you guys would like to continue the conversation during that downtime, you know where to reach us. You can always tweet to me at Brando Cash. Coach Dan, where can people tweet to you at? You can find me on Twitter at WTP Coach Dan, occasionally talking all kinds of capitals related things. I find that I don't have as much time to tweet anymore having a kid. Like, I have a hard time watching the freaking games. Yeah. With, like, him. Well, he likes watching hockey, and sometimes we lie in bed as he falls asleep watching hockey. Uh, But, yeah, it's tougher, man. But I'm on there talking about Caps, Arsenal Football Club, and every time it's two steps forward, two steps back. The Bills, that went well. Screw you, Ryan. And Washington football team actually got a, a win over the Raiders. I did not have another them sports in my re- pool. What? <laughs> I did not have them <laughs> in my pool. And other sports related things, find me on Twitter at WTP Coach Dan. But hey, if you've enjoyed the show, go ahead and check us out on Facebook, Facebook.com slash what the puck pod. It's where we'll post when new shows are coming out, as well as all sorts of other things related to the Washington Caps. Who? Caspisols, the Hershey Bears, South Carolina Stingrays. I'm tired, everybody. Uh, Hershey Cubs, when things pop up. I still need one of those jerseys. Those are kind of fun. And other things related to the National Hockey League. That's, that is facebook.com slash whatthepuckpod. But Brandon, if people have enjoyed this show, I talked about the Bills. Once again, screw you, Ryan. And the Washington football team. But if they happen to enjoy a team that also suffered a feat like my Buffalo Bills, did this past weekend or well ours is monday night but that's not really the point kind of ruins what i was going for uh is there a particular podcast they should be following yeah absolutely which by the way uh you know the patriots beat up on the bills i'm predicting it i'm predicting it right here beginning of december super bowl tampa bay new england today no that's not gonna happen because not everyone is gonna be make as poor decisions as freaking mcdermott did in that game I'm calling How it. is it that the guy, that their quarterback could throw three freaking passes the entire game and they come out with a win? And the fact that every time they gave off to Singletary, it was, or, uh, I can't remember the other guy's name. I'm blanking on it at the moment. Uh, right up the freaking middle. It wasn't working. Stop it. Right up to the outside. <laughs> and the fact that there's a, Dawson Knox forgot how to catch the ball. Stefan Diggs had an easy touchdown. He dropped. Diggs is the man. Maryland native. It's fantastic. They just had a bad game. He also had a bad game. The Baltimore Ravens had a bad game up against the Pittsburgh Steelers. And you can hear me and my buddy Josh talk all about that game uh, on this week's episode of The Call. It is a Baltimore Ravens podcast. And uh, we we review preview games, just kind of like what we do here with What the Puck, but it's about the Baltimore Ravens. Little uh, preview of that show. Josh messaged me right after that failed two-boy conversion at the end of the game and said, why would you do that? Just go to overtime. I'm going to disagree with him. I like the call. So you get to hear about why I like that call, even though we lost uh, on this week's episode of The Call. You'll have to tune in and subscribe wherever you subscribe to this show. And you can subscribe to this show on uh, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn, Player.fm, Overcast, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Facebook, and YouTube. All we ask in return is for you to please spread the word about the show. We do the show for free, so all you got to do is write us an Apple time, uh, Apple Podcast review and then let people know on Facebook and Twitter and Tumblr and Pinterest and Instagram and Reddit and Snapchat and Twitch and TikTok, anywhere we're social, on the web, or with your phone. Say, I, I'm a Washington Capitals fan. I listen to What the Puck, and you should too. So only two games to go over until we talk again. Like we said, this Friday, December 10th, the Capitals are up against the Pittsburgh Penguins. At uh, in D.C., so if you are local, you can watch that in person uh, at Capital One Arena. And then if you are not local, you can watch it on ESPN Plus and Hulu. And then on Saturday, back-to-back games, they get they uh, travel up to Buffalo, 7 o'clock game. You can watch that game on NBC Sports Washington Plus. And then early next week, Coach Dan and I will be back. we got to figure out exactly what day we're going to record, but we'll figure that out later. Uh, you guys don't have to worry about it. There'll be a show. Don't worry. So uh, I think that's pretty Tuesday? much. I'm thinking Tuesday. Probably yeah. Tuesday. I think Tuesdays. We're, Thursday? We're getting, 
we're getting close to Christmas, so I can't do Thursday. I got a Christmas party I got to go to. Tuesday it is, guys. Tuesday. So See you listen. at some point on Wednesday. Yeah, hear us on Wednesday uh, before we go to Chicago. So that is it for the show this week. Everybody, say it loud, say it proud. Let's go, Caps. This has been a production of Brando Cash Entertainment. Music by DJ Wolfman. Voiceover by Sarah Jacks. For more information, go to brandocash.com.